Hello, hello. It's Kelly Snow. All right, we got y'all strapped in. <laughs> got y'all strapped in, ready to go. So I got a lot of crap going on right now. <laughs> um, oh, shoot, I forgot my first paper. Okay, so... You know, we need journals for lots of things. Let me look for my paper now. Huh, okay, well. The first thing I want to do, and I can't find it. Oh, here it is. Okay. So I wasn't sure where I wanted to do this at. There's a couple of different places, but I guess I'm going to go here. I'm not sure what to do. I've started another YouTube channel for um, different things. So I'm not sure where to put this video. Anyways, um, my new YouTube channel is called Under the Junk. I only have a few subscribers and not even a single video yet, but eventually it's going to happen here. So, so here's what I'm going to do. <laughs> so I'm going to, I need a couple of journals because I have for myself, finally. I mean, I have journals made for me, you know, like my mom makes them for me and I have other, but I never made any for myself and, um, so I'm going to take a Cheerios box and make a cover at the end. I'll show you, okay? But right now, I don't know if I'm going to like this angle now. Shoot, let me see. All right. So what I'm doing is I just need a couple of journals made, but first I wanted to I'm show you. Well, some that my mom made that and how I use them. Because people always ask me, how do you use the journals you got? How do you use them? And my mom makes these nature-based, you know, journals. And, you know, because we're from the woods. And so I have a, <laughs> I have a couple of them. And um, so anyways, I'm into, you know, wood stuff and, you know, kind of, I don't know, just nature and, you know, listening to, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so, you know, I do some kind of kooky things and I didn't know if I really wanted to share this here or not, but I'm going to anyways. Okay, so what I do is, is I'm using the, these books for like, I'm all about like self-exploration and, you know, self-help books and you know like all that stuff and I always consider nature to be the best kind of teacher and so anyway let me get this because I keep getting my my big dress in the way here and I'm trying to okay so anyway so this eagle is significant to me for lots of reasons I don't have to go into it with you guys it's you know it's kind of a private thing too at the same time but anyway um so all these little tabs my mom made, I have a verse in each one. This one's about surrender. This one's about integration, application, articulation, and stillness. And so these are the things that are going to, if you want to like make a life change and, um, you know, change things up, then... You know, we have to learn about surrender and we have to learn how to integrate the changes we want to make, not just stand around complaining about things. And then we have to apply them. We can't, again, talk and complain about our life. If there's something wrong, then, you know, you need to apply changes. So, and then articulation is really important that we talk through and write through and journal through some of the problems. And so that's just a reminder. And I jot down things there of different ways that I can articulate what's happened you can do it through art whatever and then stillness that's a big one I haven't written anything there yet but um our 
mental state and of mind and a still clear mind. You know, there's big theories on that, you know, about no mind theories and all that. So, so anyway, that's a big thing. Then my mom wrote some stuff right here, which is really neat. She's got a leather, like she just did a cool job. And so anyway, this shuts up and, and so anyways, my books, I just use for like different times when I've had to use surrender and then different like little rituals or ceremonies or passages that I've used I write down and um so then some of it like here well you know I'm into all kinds of weird stuff so <laughs> um um the ga effect is you know time to seek and well, I don't have to read it all to you, but anyways, it's just kind of what I do. And so these tags I just wrote on um, just a reminder on how to become wild. You know, I write poetry, you guys. Sometimes I share it and you see it. So I use some of her books to write, you know, all my um, stuff in. Sweetness is another thing that, whoops, oh, I keep hitting this camera. I'm in a, my kitchen. You know, there's lots of things a person has to work on, you know, so I'm not very sweet. So, <laughs> so I constantly have to remind myself of how I come about this and, you know, how to mold change within myself and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, um, magnificent to behold something for what it really is. No judgment, no blame, only awareness. So sweetness is about, you know, not having any judgments or any ideas about anything. And sweetness is the essence of things without you adding anything to it or needing to change it. It already is magnificent. So I just write these little things down, you know. And anyway, so, um, so I just have a whole bunch of things you know that my mom and then I put a little thing in here about you know just sweetnesses finding the gift and everything and everything then becomes the essence therein you know things like that you know I just write my little things down and this one is um, women of origin I really loved this one um, Sometimes when you get into a deeper meditative state, things um, things rise up that you come to know. Um, and other times, you know, when you're too busy, you miss it. And so, anyway, I was doing some studying on women of origin, you know, where we came from. And um, I don't know, it ended up with kind of a... I don't know. I mean, it's just neat, but some of the stuff I wrote about the woman from, you know, a long time ago. I mean, I almost want to say it's kind of a Native American thing that I was tapping into there, but but I don't know. I'd have to read it over again um, and see what that's all about. So anyway, um, let's see. They lived with the land, not against it. They had great wisdom about things, about the earth, the seasons, the time, needs, and understood necessity. I wrote weird. They, uh, women of origin were like, oh, gee, I can hardly read what I wrote here. Something about a doe listening in the woods and her full capacity and her grace and beauty and connection with all things only apparent through her stillness, through her awareness and through her eyes. You can feel her world. You can see what she sees and feel what she feels to become wild. Oh, this is cool. To behold her beauty and feel her oneness with everything around her in itself is an amazing gift. So anyways, I just go through and write different things. And um, this one's about, I don't know what draws me to the woods. 
Um, this is about a warrior. And, you know, just... Mm, Oh, this one's cute. It doesn't matter where you are. You can go. You can gain the effect wherever need be, even across the span of the seas. The same as butterfly wings. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> and then uh, this is just, just a bunch of writings of mine, you know, that I did. Some of this I didn't write in yet, but some of it I did. So anyways, I just love this book my mom gave me, and I use it for lots of different things. Oh, this is, whoops, this was when we were doing our full moon ceremony. And this is talking about um, slowing down the warrior's pathway. Doubt is out. <laughs> um... Asking the trees and um, listening to tree magic and that's hidden within them. Become a tree and you will come to know the ways of the world and the ways of tree magic. And, you know, trees live in a constant state of surrender. So it's uh, they're a good lesson. This is about rain. Things I wrote about the rain and just different stuff. This is all about raindrops, you know, mom wrote. She did raindrop tags, and then I wrote, Hi. Hi, Allison. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and then raindrop. So then I wrote my own. You know, you got to go in depth sometimes. You got to dig deep for things. Otherwise, you know, we don't get anywhere and we stay on the surface. So when you dig deep into a simple thing as a raindrop, then, you know, you're tapping into places that writers go you know what I mean that movies come from and where your imagination takes you is a magic place so anyway raindrops reveal a clean start a fresh beginning and a new breath let them wash over you drip um let them wash over you drip drop at a time like tiny kisses from mother earth replenishing the soul with her kiss so that's cute I didn't plan on reading any of this stuff to anybody, but allow the rain to wash away all the pain and all the days. Let the rain begin anew to give the seed a drink in you. Oh, for cute. <laughs> oh, for cute. <laughs> That's cute. Anyway. Anyway, so um, I love this right here. Oh, my gosh. This is just so... So this is, you know, sometimes when you have to have new beginnings and you need to write things down and mark it down as a chapter in your life, you know. And so anyways, um, a, new, a new page, you know, turn the page of the old and, you know, start a new thing. So turn the page to forever and leave it all behind. And you really can do that with yourself. You can just shut the book on anything that... Um, doesn't serve you and just get rid of it and turn the page and so then I was writing down my rebirth statement and how it takes no effort to exist um that's a big one <laughs> you know we spend a lot of time on usefulness and being busy and you know all these things but you know it really that's just society, you know, and all of that. It really doesn't take any effort to exist. And so those are the things that I need to implement um, as I showed you in the beginning in the front and integrate and do these things. Um, they're the paths that I will follow to lead me um, to avoid uh, the programs and to to the Tao and to nothing, which is better, you know, connecting to nothing and, and emptiness rather than, you know, what society says we should be doing and thinking about. <laughs> and this is a reminder that every single minute is a clean slate. We don't need to hang on to what happened yesterday or a minute ago. We can drop everything and just start over. 
instead of dwelling. So that's just what I do there. And then um, become the pond, the tree, the grass. It doesn't matter where you're at. They will always welcome you back. So no matter what situation I'm in, I know that stillness and becoming part of the environment will relieve, relieve me of any human issues, you know. So that's kind of how that goes. And so anyway, there's just a bunch of stuff in here. So these are really fun. And there's this big pocket right here. I haven't gotten all. Oh, this is what I was going to write. About the wind. I just wrote one about the wind the other day and posted it in um, under the junk group. But I haven't written it there yet. <laughs> and then uh, I think that's as far as I've gotten in this book so far. So this was the very first book my mom ever made. And um, The Secret Forest, it says. And I don't know. I think that's paper, but it looks like real tree bark. Then hidden within is an ancient coin that some say has magical properties. And so she um, hid a little coin inside here, which I found. But anyway, it was really fun. This is her first book she ever made. Look how huge it is. And when I when she sent it to me, I was going to do the flip through. You know, she didn't know how to do all that yet. Anyways, I bawled my eyes out. Oh, I just want to keep it, Mom, you know. <laughs> so So she let me keep this one, you know. So then it was like, I don't know, a year later, maybe it was two years, I don't know. But my birthday then in December came last year and I wanted one about wings and woods because I love um, just the wings. So I want to show you, like, this is so friggin' amazing what she's doing, <laughs> what she's doing with these wings and... I had sent her some papers that were like, you know, look how the little tuck spots. Oh my God, this journal is so amazingly crazy. So I can't help but get inspired by, this one pulls right out, look. This one pulls right out and you can write all this stuff on the front and back and then it hides back in the pocket. It's just cool. So anyway, this one now I'm using for, now this is where I don't know if I even want to go here, but I'm going to do it anyway because I really love these girls. So I'm part of this group called the Sisters Enchanted and um, they're putting on a free seven day class right now called Expedition to the Soul. And um, they're on Facebook or the sistersenchanted.com and you can just follow along and you print this out. It's free. You print this out. I'm a yearly member there, so I did subscribe to them. And I think right now they have this big sale. It's like 200 bucks for the year or something. And there's so much stuff. It's so fun. This is like being on a quest to, you know, how sometimes you just need a push to start something new. And this is about bringing in everyday natural magic, women's intuition that has been lost. And so... So anyway, this is really fun. So anyway, this is going to be my quest book. And um, they hold several classes all the time. They got different stuff going on. Some you pay for, some are free. I mean, if you want to, you know, you don't have to. But they do lots of free stuff and whatever. And so, so it's really fun. And these two are the sisters. They're real sisters and whatever. And I just love them, Sarah. And so anyway, it just explains what the quest is. And... Um, what to look for, and then um, the maps. And so I was started on the maps, and that was really fun. You had to make a map of your house, your living space. And then we had to, what it does is it, it makes you hone in on things that we normally, like liminal things, like like things that you can't see, like love, you can't see it. You can't touch it, but you know it exists, right? Okay, so we're trying to tap into those liminal things of our sense of knowing. And so, anyway, so so it gets you in tune with your surroundings. So what she's having us do here is a map. It's a map of your home, kind of just a sketch of your house. And then all the rooms, she has you go from room to room and just feel what the room feels like. You know when you walk into a room what it feels like. You've done it a million times, but you didn't really pay attention to the, what you were doing. You didn't really 
even have any idea, really, some of you that 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 that's what you were doing. And so anyway, so the so this makes you kind of practice, you know, so so anyway, so you got to go into every room, feel what every room feels like, and then associate that feeling with a color. And so I got my bedrooms, living room, dining room, you know, and I got the colors on there. Okay, so that's the map. I have no idea what it's for yet, but these are the instructions and I'm just following along because we're on a quest and this is really fun. You know, you're on an adventure, you know, to self-explore and, you know, all that. So anyway, <laughs> so anyway, uh, that's the first map. And then the second map is to create a map of your own energy, which I have not done yet because I got a bunch of questions and um, I'm waiting for them to answer me. And then map three is the map of your attachments, a starting point and um, what is along the path that you need to travel to 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 get to the future you and then mark it all down. So anyway, there's all these little instructions before we start. And um, there's no rush. I don't think we haven't started yet. So if you want to go join, you sure can. And then um, anyway, it just talks about it. And so now, so that's what we're doing. We're just waiting for everybody to join up. And we're doing our maps and we're get your journal out was the first directions. I'm like, woohoo. So this is really fun, you know. So anyways, so the map is here and my, I love this is just fierce. So I wrote about the eagle's eye. Um, is keen in sight, fierce with instinct and knowing, fully being and living with truth, dignity and honor, born free to soar the wind and take what it needs to survive without shame, guilt, or remorse. Just pure sight into what is and what shall be. Because, you know, look at that. Woo so anyway, I'm all about that. So, so then, so anyway, she's got all kinds of stuff. And so I'm on another one, too. I'm in another class. Um, it's about a journey, anyway. So, so here's my map of attachment. I haven't finished yet, so that's in here. And then my mom has like the wonder of the trees and she's got all this stuff in here for me to do, you know. And then this one is um, why I'm doing the quest and what I hope to get out of it and blah, 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 blah. Now listen, your writing has a, a lot of power and people don't understand that. Writing things down and doing sort of declarations is extremely important for your well-being. It really is. And so I love this part. It comes open like this and you can write little things in there. This is so cool. So anyways, when we talk about um, the mother's wounds, um, sometimes when your mother has wounds, she passes them on to you. You know, you know how your grandma does something, you know, whatever, and your mom does it. Now you do it. Well, wounds are the same. So it's asking me to, you know, tap into the mother wounds, tap into the sister wounds, you know, and just actually take a look at what's actually going on. And some of the stuff, you know, that we carry is not even ours, you know, so it's just awareness of what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Look at this. Isn't this cute? The little tree. <laughs> so anyway, so this one I'm using for all that stuff. So now... This one is so fun, too. This one has a big pull-out, too. This one pulls out. This one's where I'm going to do my map, my map, too, my energy map, but I don't have it. I don't know what I'm doing yet. And this is um, the beginning of healing. So I started, I need two books, and this is why I'm starting it. So I'm going to get to that. So now I need two books. I've been in this house now for a couple of years. I have a willow tree outside. Some of you know. Um, I'll be right back. I gotta get something. So I got a willow tree out in my yard. You know, that's the best kind of wood for carving and different things. Anyways, I always look to the willow for wisdom, and so there was a branch that needed to be cut, and so I cut, Sean cut it for me, and then we cut 
all these little discs and I'm making a set of runes. If you guys don't know what those are, um, I'm kind of, um, into the folklorish kind of stuff. And, um, you know, I'm from Minnesota, so I'm kind of into the Viking thing. And this is kind of like where the runes originated. And so, so I do those rune casts, you know, so, I, so anyway, so I'm making my set of runes out of the tree in my yard because um, I've really connected with that tree. And so what I need is a book, a journal to write down all my rune stuff. Each rune has a different meaning. There's an alphabet. Um, and I'm spending, um, this one's Fehu. I'm spending um, a, a whole 24 hours with each piece and then I put it in here and then I wear this on my body so I really connect with each piece um so so I'm only on day two I've only got two done and I haven't even burned them in or anything I just did the carving so it's kind of a long process and it's kind of a quiet meditative private kind of a thing so I said I was going to do videos on it but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to because I'm infusing things and if I'm doing a video, I can't concentrate. So I don't know. So that's what I'm doing with this. And so, so I just wanted to show really quick because I have so many new people. So I'm just taking off the stuff off the box top right here. But you know, these are really good tabs. If you just cover them, if you want to cut this up for tabs, I keep these pieces. And then I don't really do any major measuring. Really, I just fold my sheet in half and, you know. And then I'm going to do two signatures, I guess, in this one. And, um, you know, you just cut it up. Measure it up and cut it up. And then I have this kind of fabric right here. I'm going to cover it with this because I love this thick upholstery. I have some of this in my shop. It doesn't photograph very well, so the pictures don't look good, and <laughs> nobody wants it, but but I love it, and it's beautiful, and so anyways, I'm going to cover it with that. Then I can write down all my rune stuff and my rune cast that I do for myself and others. So, let's see. Here we go. So all I'm going to do is, so I'm just ripping the stuff off the box and then you just cut it to size like, and you got to cover, you know, cause I like, and sometimes I don't even want the cardboard in there. I just want fabric cause I want it to be able to bend, you know, but I think I want this one to be a little bit stiff. So I want to put some fabric on it upholstery. It's really thick. Ta-da! <laughs> and look at, these are perfect tabs. So we'll just pull these off and then, because I need each rune to have a tab, because I write things down. You learn from runes every time you, I do a casting I learn something new about them you know because every person brings out something different so I like to write down so I don't forget you know what happened there and then rune casting is kind of you're kind of um, using your mediumship skills you're kind of a medium between you got to take yourself out of the way, your logistical mind, you know, and move that out of the way so that you are open to receiving messages, you know. Now, <coughs> we have a woman's intuition that we use constantly every single day <laughs> only we're not probably aware that that's what we're doing you know and sometimes it you have to watch out because you can't tell if it's a judgment or if it's 
an intuitional type of feeling. You know what I'm saying? So you have to really make sure that you can decipher between between the two, you know. And this piece now I use for the spine so it's reinforced. Because it fits right in here, see? It'll fit right in the center here, see? So I save that piece too. But for now, all we need to do is cut this part. I forget how many inches. <laughs> Done this so many times, but I forget. Eight and a half, so we'll just do nine inches, right? Okay, so I just make little tick marks all along. Nine inches, you know. And just keep going with the nine inch tick mark all the way across the board and right tick 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 and then you want it good at the end too so you know where you're going right and then you can draw a line or just you know cut it I think I'm just gonna cut it because this is just for me and I really I'm not that fussy and I just want to get this together because I'm making my runes right now and I need a place to write while I'm in that kind of meditative space to receive what the rune is you know gonna tell me and connect with it and you know learn about what it represents and you know all that stuff so I kind of gotta and then this one let's see what is this? So I kind of got to listen to the rune rather than... So we'll just do five and a half. I got to listen to the willow tree. Which I would rather do most days than listen to what anybody else has to say. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know. Five and a half. So we'll just do five and a half. Cut that. See? Yay. I'm getting it. And five and a half. What y'all doing? What y'all doing? I see you're watching me, but you ain't talking. <laughs> what the heck? Okay, five and a half. So I think after this, I'm not quite sure what to do here. I got that under the junk group. I don't know if I should do that there, or if I should do it on my new channel or what, because I don't want to freak people out when I, <laughs> I mean, doing magic books is way different than way different than doing journals, you know, and doing so just regular vintage, you know, some people aren't into it, so I just wanted to make a channel for magic crafts because a lot of people want to know how to do these these runes and I make wands and I do sage bundles and herb work and you know all that, so so and then these pieces, now I can save for tags. Okay, so there you have it. So now I can, here's the really funny thing is, is I don't know where my paintbrush is. <laughs> I can't find a single paintbrush. I'm doing boho in my room. So that's a complete disaster. So psh, I can't even find anything to use. So anyways, I'm going to just slop some Mod Podge on here. 
And here's how I do it. I'll show you. We will get it all ready to do. Ooh, this looks awful skinny. I don't know if this will work. Ooh, boy, I don't know if that'll work. I cut this one too skinny. Let's see. Let's just see if we can wing it. I don't know. Because I am going to sew, you know. So let's just see if I can. Because then I just wrap it like this. Boy, oh boy, it's barely going to fit. But I think it will be okay. So then I just go like this. And rip it if I can. Nope. <laughs> Not this stuff. It's too thick. So we'll just cut. And these scissors are horribly dull. They're out here on my shipping spot. There. And then we'll see. It's kind of thick on this end and skinny on this end. But so I just give it a Mod Podge coat and cover it up, cover it up. And then I take it and sew it all the way around on my sewing machine. And then I'll have my, my cover. I love this tapestry kind of vintage -y stuff. And then um, this wax thread you can get in my shop. Uh, Bygones Variety Shop on Etsy. Okay. All right. So thanks for stopping in, guys. We'll see you all later. Bye.